Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, if you're new to carving, then you're probably new to carving chisels and you're probably looking for a set of chisels. I know this because I'm in that position too. I've never done any carving. It looks like a fun thing to try, but I didn't want to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on chisels that I might not use. Equally, I didn't really want to just spend 25 pounds, 30 pounds on a Chinese set of chisels of unknown origin, unknown quality. And therefore, I decided to buy Axminster's budget range of chisels, which are 70 pounds at the moment. And with postage, they came to 75 pounds. Now, I don't know if these chisels are any good. I haven't really even looked at them. So this is a bit of an unboxing or initial impressions review of these chisels from someone who has no right to actually have an opinion on these chisels because they've never done any carving in their life. Now, that said, if you're in the market for these chisels, then you're probably in exactly the same position. You've probably not done any carving before. So let's find out together if these chisels are any good and if we can actually carve something using them. So the tool roll they come in is a lot nicer than the picture implies when you buy them. It's a canvas tool roll. It has um, a fabric covers either side and all of the chisels have these little plastic covers on them and then there are little protectors on the end pieces. I've swapped these rounds. They come with the pointy bits in the pockets. But what I've found from other people that have used chisels and people that do woodwork carving is they tend to have their chisels with the sharp bits showing so that I guess they can see where the chisel they're looking for is. So we'll start by getting rid of these unnecessary pieces of plastic. Now let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a wooden, it looks like a hardwood, it's probably beech handle it's an octagonal candle feels quite nice to hold no complaints there if we take the plastic off this i believe is a spoon gouge for spooning out stuff and making spoons believe it or not this spoon gouge doesn't feel at all sharp to me um, i think it's ground but not sharpened would be my view of it so let's see if the others are similar and i won't show you all of them but i'll go for a few yeah that's not really sharp it's just ground let's look at say this one I think I'm going to have to sharpen all of them I think that's pretty common for cheap chisels these chisels themselves the steel looks pretty good it's not marred or anything it looks pretty solid the handles look pretty solid they have sizes on them well I'm not sure how useful these sizes are this one says 9 to 10 millimeters so I'd say we have quite a nice range what I'll do is I'll inspect them all, put them in some sort of order, and then we can have a look at the range that we've got. So I've put these into a sensible order, I think. We have here a large and a small spoon gouge. We then have a range of normal gouges, ranging from this one, which says it goes up to 20 millimetres, down to this one, which says it starts at three millimeters. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those gouges. We then have a V-shaped profile and then a straight one and a skew. From a complete novice who's not done any woodworking at all, this to me feels like a reasonable range of carving chisels. But then what do I know? Okay, there's something I've noticed when sharpening these is that the blades have this coating on them it looks like it's overspray from from the handle maybe just see how dull it is and how cruddy it is it comes off with a bit of rubbing and um, white spirit or terps but when you do it then you end up with something that's a bit more like this so as well as needing to sharpen them you're going to have to get this coating off you know it just feels like dirt i guess but i think it's a coating either deliberately put on to protect the chisel until it gets sold or it's overspill from the process of spraying the handles. You can just see the difference between these. That's just something to bear in mind if you buy these chisels. You're going to have to deal with cleaning all the crud off of them first. 
here's a close up of how these actually come and this is what it looks like after sharpening and stropping now i've been doing some sharpening but i haven't sharpened these the size of these two chisels yet there's a few things i just want to point out one is here you can see there's a residue on this chisel and on this chisel over here and if you look closely at the surface of the chisel you can see the grinding marks what i've done is i've polished them with a thousand grit stone and then i've used a strop to get rid of all of those marks and you can see on this side there is no residue and it's a nice shiny chrome finish the same with this side and you can see here all of the grinding marks have been removed and that they're now very much a mirror surface So this is a piece of Sapili. I'll take you through all of the chisels and gouges. Now I've sharpened these to the best of my ability. They no longer have any of the grind marks on the back. They're nice and shiny and I can see a reflection of myself in the chisels. But to do that has taken me five or six hours in total for 12 chisels. So that's about half an hour per chisel. I had to clean all of the shanks and I for that I started off using turpentine but then switched to um, Brasso which is a mildly abrasive brass cleaner and that seemed to do the trick quite quickly on some of the chisels I had to go down to 400 grit on my diamond stone before going up to a thousand grit and then stropping them with the the leather strop. I can feel as I do this not all of the chisels are as sharp as the others so I'll need some more work to do but I think that is really something for me to improve on rather than the chisels. I think the chisels can be sharp because some of them are very sharp. I just need a little bit more practice in sharpening them. So the big question, I guess, is do I recommend them and should you buy them? Well, in terms of recommend, I think I'm going to cop out because being a complete novice at carving, I don't know what good looks like. But in terms of would I buy them again, I think I would. I think if you understand that they will need sharpening, that they will have grind marks on the backs and that they are in effect ground but not sharpened and that you are going to have to remove those grind marks and sharpen them yourself something that if you're going to get into the hobby of wood carving you're going to have to learn to do anyway and whilst it's taken me a long time to do I've really enjoyed doing it I feel I've achieved something I'm sure a lot of people would say they're nowhere near sharp enough but I also think that with time and more and more practice I will get a lot better if we look at these now they're nice and shiny there is no lacquer and these are nice and smooth and move easily which i think is what you want and i can see that i have a nice mirror surface here and remember this is the first time i've ever sharpened gouges and when i've sharpened chisels in the past i've always used a honing guide and therefore the level of skill you need is quite low so i think i've done a pretty good job and i guess it also shows that perhaps you don't need to be that skilled to get a reasonable result i suspect you do need a lot of skill and experience to get an excellent result but i think now that i've invested the time in getting them sharpened and polished up that these will serve me well for the next few years and if i decide that i enjoy carving and want to continue then i may well look to upgrade at some point in the future but for now i don't know if it's for me really so i shall keep using these until i start to get frustrated with them well that about wraps up another video hopefully if like me you're completely new to carving and you're thinking of getting the Axminster budget hand carving chisel set, you'll have a better idea of exactly what you're getting. If you've enjoyed this video, then please leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, then please subscribe. And if you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them below. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.